This is my official application to FaZe Clan. Get your quad feed! <laughs> We're getting. Welcome back boys, Golga here and today I'm joined by Kanabi. Uh, we just finished watching the Ubisoft event where they had some new game releases, announcements, as well as some X Defiant content. We have a bunch to get to but we thought that today because we're officially halfway through the preseason with season 1 dropping on July 2nd we would kind of review our pros and cons, likes and dislikes so far with the preseason and our season 1 wish list coming up, things we want changed, things we want implemented and we'll just kind of start it off. So. You're seeing in the background the official announcement trailer with three new guns, the L11 Sniper, the LVOA Assault Rifle, and the Sawed-Off Double Barrel, which I think is pretty much the same gun as the regular Double Barrel that we have in the game now. Uh, we're getting a new faction, GSK from Rainbow Six Siege. We're getting three new maps, one each month. One is called Clubhouse, Daytona, and Rockefeller. There's also going to be a new Prestige Rank System, the CTF Game Mode, which I'm super hyped for, and of course, a whole bunch of cash shop items. Who cares? No big deal. I hate those <laughs> things anyway. I kind of fell asleep while you are mentioning that last part as well, so. Yeah, it's okay. $40 for blue, as our as our boy uh, Angry, Angry Joe would Joe. say. $40 to <laughs> fight out of your minds! Love that guy. Shout out, Angry I Joe. Know, if you, I out of your mind! If you ever see this. <laughs> Love you, man. Yeah, hell yeah. No, no. Uh, Angry Joe's one, one of my um, uh, OG father? subscribes, for sure. <laughs> I never knew my father. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so preseason yeah. likes. I think we kind of uh, are in agreement on some of these. I think we both really like the map variety uh, as well as the game mode selection where everything is pretty much objective-based. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so as far as the game modes, um, I think they all have a good unique twist to them, um, I, except for Domination. Domination is like pretty much exactly what it is. I like that it goes to 750 instead of 250, but I think that's just more of a timing thing than what it is uh, versus like Call of Duty. Uh, I, I think Call of Duty's like has a slower rate, but the game match takes about the same time uh, amount of time. Um, but other than that, um, I think their answer to TDM in the current moment, which is um, uh, the hot shot mode, um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, pretty again, unique spin on it. Uh, it's kind of like TDM uh, plus kill confirm, but you actually get benefits for capturing it. It's uh, gives you um, a good incentive to, uh, to actually try to play the OBJ. I think that's what they're really trying to focus on is, hey, we're going to have like, you know, we are an FPS shooter first, uh, but we obviously want to have multiple modes, but we want to make sure the players are encouraged to play the actual modes that they're selecting. Uh, that's always been a big complaint. I was like, well, why are you playing this mode? Like, I know you can select what game mode you want to play. Why are you playing this mode if you're not playing the objective? Go play TDM. Um, so I think they're doing a good job of um, imp implementing good rewards in game uh, for those game modes. What do you think about movement? I think when I first started in my initial review and impressions, I kind of called it floaty and clunky, but now that I've gotten used to it and the different omnidirectional movement, it actually feels really good. Um, it kind of reminds me of old COD uh, without sounding too cliche. What are your thoughts on that? For that one, I can't really compare it to old COD for myself because um, the first COD that I ever got to play was uh, World of War on the Wii. Um, so none of this movement would really kind of affect that. Um, I didn't get a PS3 until uh, a year before PS4 came out. So my experience on that um, specifically is a little bit low. Um, I did play a lot of Call of Duty, but um, I think this is I, I, I can't think of any time in Call of Duty where I was able to move while in midair. Um, but now that I'm pretty decent at doing so, um, I actually like it, to be honest. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's what enables the uh, extreme bunny hopping um, and kangarooing, which I, my, myself, I do dislike that. Yeah, newsflash, that, that's that on our dislike list for sure. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> yeah, <coming> absolutely. <laughs> um, but I know that in Call of Duty, there's a lot of times where, like, if you make a, a, if you make a slight mistake while, like, either trying to slide or trying to jump, your character is going to continue in that direction. So especially when you're trying to like clip around a corner properly, um, those, you know, nanoseconds, those milliseconds where you're trying to make that adjustment 
don't do anything in Call of Duty, where in this game it does. So it kind of helps you actually mantle when you want to mantle. It ha helps keep you from mantling on top of something when you don't want to mantle on top of something. Um, so for that part, I do enjoy it, but I, I do understand it also does enable the ability to buddy hop. So I think if they um, put a cap on how many times you can jump in a moment or slide or chain the slide jump, whatever the case may be, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be coming down the pipeline. Uh, but obviously we'll wait for that update to come out to confirm it. And as good as the movement feels, it's nothing if the gunplay isn't good and if the weapons aren't punchy. And I have about 90 levels into the AK and I'm really enjoying the way the weapons feel in the game. Um, it definitely, everything kind of has like its own niche. I wish that they were more defined though, like shotguns don't really feel that powerful or buffed at, at short distances. And hip fire is a bit terrible, really at all for SMGs or really anything, which is kind of an odd miss, even when you put on the attachments that reduce the spread. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the idea that there's more of an emphasis right now on the weapons and gunplay than there is on the abilities, even though some of the abilities can be groundbreaking. I feel like that's kind of the point of an ultimate. It yeah. is supposed to be groundbreaking. It, it is supposed to kind of upset the current flow of the, the gameplay. Um, but it doesn't feel to me like you can't counteract that with either a different uh, class, different ability, like dead mm -hmm. sex. They can hack, uh, you know, things <laughs> like that. Um, or you can't just outplay it if you have better aim, which which is a good place to be. Before we move yeah, to dislikes, oh, can good. you think of anything? Uh, what was the last part? Before we move to dislikes, can you think of anything else you want to add that you like so far? Yeah, so as far as the abilities go, I know there's a bit of controversy um, within the two communities, May X Defiant and Call of Duty. There, there, there's definitely some overlap there, like you and I, um, maybe more so me than you. I know um, you've been off cloud for a lot longer than I have, um, although I'm pretty much off of it now. Uh, but when it comes to the abilities, I, I, I don't really understand the concept that some people are, are, are making the argument of <clears throat> that, that they will bash the abilities say that the abilities are dumb and stupid but then those same people will be like oh we want we want kill streaks this is like well but 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 that is the kill streak like like your ultimate it charges up only by kills if you notice it doesn't go up by by a timer um it goes up only by your kills which helps make sure that hey unless you're doing very decent above the the enemy competition you may i even i have had some some um some matches where i don't get my ult because i'm just not performing as well as the other team so it's like, okay, well, you know, if if that's the case, you know, you can't be saying, oh, we, you know, we want kill streaks, we want UAVs, we want chopper guns. It's like, okay, well, but the abilities do that. Just like you said, it disrupts the gameplay, it disrupts the game flow, you know. So like when someone that's running that shield character, they pop that bubble shield to get on the objective. As much as it's annoying to play against that, I can appreciate that that's there because I know that I can do the same thing when those sides turn around. I can go ahead and pop that shield. And I can do the same exact thing. And you can counter it. You know, if you have communication with your team, say, hey, they're using that 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 bubble shield. Let's all shoot at it at the same time. And that thing will go away in like three seconds. So it definitely right. just demands that that communication demands that teamwork. And that's what they were going for. That's what they wanted. Um, there is something to be said where your semi ults of your your like class standard ability. I think they're all on a default 30 second timer. Um, I, I have less than an hour played on any class except for uh, the Echelon um, with the uh, wall hacks. That's because you're a fiend with the wall hacks because the wall hacks are so OP. That's all you run. Well, see, see that's the thing. The, the more that I've been playing that character, I'm noticing that it's it's actually not all that strong because the range on it, it's A, um, the 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 other Echelon characters don't show up on the minimap even if they're within range. So if right now I'm playing uh, Field of View at, at 90 degrees, right? So that means that I have like like a quarter panel of, of view sight. So anyone that's playing Echelon, I can't see them through walls unless they are directly in front of me. And if they're above me or below me, I mean, you know, that we're, we're not even looking at a circle. We're looking at a sphere now. I think uh, but can... anyone else will show up on the UAV, but that's the thing. There is no actual UAV. So the nerf to that character or like the detriment to that character is the fact that they are the only ones that have UAV, UAV capabilities. So again, the argument that people want kill streaks, including UAV, kind of doesn't make sense because then if someone gets that kill streak, that four or five kill streak, pops for UAV, they're pretty much getting two classes in one, which would make the echelon character less. And if they imply that same kind of mentality to any of the other characters, it defeats the purpose of there being certain types of characters. So yeah, I definitely think that the approach needs to be. This is part of my wish list items for season one. Uh, they need to balance through buffs, not nerfs. I think that a lot of games have a habit of when there's like a meta and everybody's aware of it, uh, they tend to pick the highest tier of the meta and they kind of prune it down and nerf it into the ground. 
But that's not fun. I'd rather play a game where everything is buffed up. That way everything feels, you know, powerful in and of itself to where you can run mm -hmm. whatever you want, any character you want, any gun, and it all feels good in its own way. Um, I will say, though, for dislikes, we had some problems with hitboxes. Uh, we noticed that the cleaner's hitbox is smaller than the actual player model, and I've actually ran into that a couple times where I've been, you know, aiming right at them and bullets aren't registering, and of course part of that is the hit reg issue that we're experiencing right now, but also part of it is, is that, again, the hitboxes and the player models are not lining up. Uh, bullet damage does not penetrate through hitboxes. Like, for example, if you were telling me that when you were sniping, and somebody was turned uh, 90 degrees away from you and you shot them in the arm, mm -hmm. it only registers the hit on the arm. It doesn't penetrate through to the chest hitbox. So you're getting hit markers at 90 on a character when you hit them center mass from the side. That seems like a problem to me. Um, another big one is TTK. Uh, without going on a crazy rank, I know we're both very passionate about TTK. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the current TTK and how that kind of how a nerf to that could maybe help out the issue we're currently having with the snipers being OP as far as the community is concerned. Yeah, so so that's the thing. The, the TTK in and of itself isn't... It, it It's an issue to me, but it's not an issue to the point where I think it has to be fixed. I think if they do go ahead and add that flinch properly to the snipers, that will kind of balance things out. Um, but I think the, the, the main issue next to that it's kind of the net code it, it it wouldn't feel like you're dying too quick um if the net code was good and then um if we did lower that ttk yeah obviously you know you're gonna have less hits to hit someone but if they roll that ttk down right now uh while the net code is screwed up it, it's gonna be treachery because if you think you're dying behind walls now and that ttk is lower think about what it's gonna be then you're 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 gonna be dying before you even get hit um, so they, they definitely need to make sure they roll those out at the same time or go ahead and address the sniper flinch first. Um, if they really don't want to touch that TTK, I get it. Um, but then they need to supplement that with the hardcore mode. I think if we did go ahead and get, of course, the, um, uh, like the a hardcore mode, the, um, if, if, if they got the net code down and they go ahead and put in a hardcore mode, um, that that's basically what all I'm going to be playing. Cause there's just too many times, like taking the sniper rifles out of the equation, when you like hit someone so many times, and that hit reg isn't working, and then they just turn around and, and, and gun you down because they were connected to a better Waffle House Wi-Fi than you. That doesn't feel good, man. What also doesn't feel good is when you know you're playing against a sniper and you're quote unquote counter sniping with like a rifle or something, and you're on target and you're controlling your recoil and you're putting four or five bullets in them, and they mm -hmm. still last minute get a shot off and kill you with one hit. It just, it's, yeah. not, it's just not competitive. Um, it's it, They need to do something with it. I don't think... I love sniping in games. I think it feels great in this game. I don't want them to nerf it into existence. I think they just need to increase maybe the minimum damage on assault rifles. That way engagement ranges can be a bit more... You know, higher TTK at range. Like right now, for mm -hmm. example, I think the AK build we have is like doing 17 damage at... I think it's like, what, plus 60 meters? So a lot mm -hmm. of your sniper engagements are going to be 50 plus meters. So if you were to change it and maybe have that base damage be 20 to 22 at 50 plus meters, and yeah, I know they have attachments that can do this, but if you just have this at a base level, uh, I think it would make that feel a bit better. I also hate right now the XP rate. It's an absolute meme. Um, I think the, X, the two times XP should be the regular experience rate. Uh, it just feels a lot better, and it feels like I'm actually making progress. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think that that's pretty much everybody's opinion is more XP is always better, right? Yeah, so when it comes to the XP, um, the default XP rate is trash. Um, when they throw on the double XP, it somewhat feels okay. Like you can kind of get a few decent attachments within a decent amount of matches, a decent amount of time. Um, but throwing on the other day, um, I threw on the double XP and it it's stacking with the double XP event. That's a nice thought. I'm glad that that's how that works. Um, but it just kind of felt like it was not like, okay, cool. Like I'm actually leveling up my gun like each match I can throw on like one new attachment which that that's like the minimum requirement is like okay I use this gun for a whole match I didn't switch to anything else um I stuck with it like give me something for that so I think for the first um I'd say maybe like 20 levels of the gun if you're getting at least one attachment one level per um match that you're playing that 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 feels good and on top of that I think attachments need to be way more impactful I can't tell you how many times I've slapped on different attachments and that shit feels exactly the same. Like, there's really no difference in my opinion. Like, we're running an AK build right now where you have no stock, 
and full rate of fire, and that's supposed to re reduce the accuracy, that thing still feels laser. So they really need to make the attachments more defined, I think, and kind of let people carve more of a niche as to how they want to build out their weapons, because I really just don't see that much of a difference between one build and another. Um, 6v6 right now, let's talk about that. We've played a lot of 6v6. I've noticed as more people have gotten used to the gameplay and the way that the movement is and the mechanics of the game, it seems like it, you know, it's kind of speeding up a little bit. What I mean by that is when we first started playing, everybody was getting used to the way that the movement was, mm -hmm. the gunplay, and it was a little bit more cautious and slow. Now, it's kind of like a turbo fest. Everybody's bunny hopping around, doing uh, you know, air strafing. It's kind of crazy. So I know that you and I have been playing a lot of 4v4, and we've been really enjoying it because it seems like it's a bit more chill, a bit more tactical. And when you get into gunfights, you have a better chance of winning a one-on-one -on -one instead of getting just creamed by two or three other players coming out of nowhere. Yeah, no, um, I've never really been a big fan of the 6v6. Um, kind of jumping back to when I played uh, my first Call of Duty on, on Wii World at War, it was limited to 4v4 for technical purposes. That's a throwback. Um, too. What, what happened? That's a throwback, dude. We are I know, <laughs> I know, dude. I, dude, that game was so good. But um, if you're wondering how old we are, that's your there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not really gauged for me because I'm pretty sure I was playing that on Wii while like MW2 was already out, or maybe something after. If you that, want to know so. how poor we are, there you go. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, no, um, when, when it comes to 6v6, unless the map is like decently big, like I think back to like Black Ops 1 on that one map array that was snow, that was such a big map. So six people actually felt decent. You could kind of play tactically. You could be like, hey, I think someone's over here. Let me take this path and whatnot. But these maps are so small. Um, even if you're playing, um, like the escort mode, um, th there's just too much going on at one time for you to even come up with a plan. Um, well, the so, arena map in particular, I, I've had a hard time with that one. That was one crazy. Because not only yeah. is it small, but it's also, it's vertical. So when True. you're coming around a corner, you're not just checking two-dimensional plane, you're checking like four different dimensions. Um, yeah. And it just, you know, plus spawns flip on certain modes. So that can get yeah. kind of crazy. Uh, so I'm not really a fan of that in that capacity. I think 4v4 is a bit more where it's at for me. Um, for sure they just that... definitely need to make sure they either come out with a 4v4 casual or um i'm sure this is probably on the dislike list they need to make sure uh that when you have um input mode turned on or off or uh crossplay on or off that does need to 1000 percent affect rank mode they completely yes. defeats the purpose that you want to play against only controller players but then they still let you get put it up on ranked against pc mouse and keyboard because as of right now we've noticed that there's no way to turn that off it's on so there's cross play enabled you can turn that on and off i think in ranked but you mm -hmm. cannot specify controller input on ranked it's you're playing against whatever and we and, already and, know it, it, that's that's a major disadvantage to controller players it's being honest that's what it is mouse and keyboard is way more accurate in my opinion you know yeah. than and than i'm controller, really but I'm really scared that they're not going to change that because they did go through the effort of putting in the bottom of that screen. Maybe you want to throw up like a screenshot of it or something. But on the bottom of that screen, it does say um, for, for controller mode input. And then it has, you know, the colon not affected for ranked gameplay. So it, it, they definitely did that as a as a uh, intentional decision, unfortunately. Um, but obviously, if they get enough feedback, I'm, I'm sure that they'll be willing to make that change because uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure well, there's some kind of caveat to it. I was like, okay, well, hey, you're playing the game, you're playing it ranked, so you know if you're using the input you want to use, you can change it at any point. But it's like, okay, but also we need to con you know, consider the the benefits and the detriments of each side of it. So that's actually a great transitional point because I was actually watching some footage when this game was first announced as Tom Clancy's X Defiant like two years ago, mm -hmm. and they've actually changed a lot, even at a base level as far as like even the names of like the uh, the factions, uh, the character models, the the outfits. And based on their feedback that, they've, that we've provided them and what they've done as far as their updates are concerned, it seems like they're pretty open to making changes. So I think as long as we voice those opinions, we have a good chance of having that changed. And I can't mm -hmm. imagine when this thing releases on season one and you have people complaining about it when they're actually caring about rank mode, it's not going to mm -hmm. get addressed. Uh, with that being said, yeah. when, we, when we look over and forward to season one wish list, I think the good place to start is going to be to fix the fundamentals. And what I mean by that is things we've talked about already. Big thing is netcode. Um, I think the the AI, the UI, I always get those confused because the, the AI era we live in now. Uh, right. But the user interface, in my opinion, is way too damn slow. It takes too long to do everything. 
I don't know why we have to load into a game, watch a, a visual of the map flip for 10 minutes, and then get in game on mm -hmm. a loading screen and wait 30 seconds to, to deploy, and then an escort wait an additional 30 seconds to be able to do anything. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. Um, yeah. We need to clean it up for sure, 100%. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's got to get better. Um, yeah, as far as yeah. Um, loading screens go, and I definitely agree with you. Uh, they made a conscious decision to make sure this game did not release on the previous generation, PS4 and uh, Xbox One, so then they could focus on making the game as good as possible. If you remember when, uh, like, the PS5 was going to be coming out, they're hyping up their um, proprietary SSDs, like, hey, it's super fast, it does this, it does that, everything loads in seconds. Um, like Spider-Man, I, I could exit my menu right now and be in Spider-Man, any of the Spider-Man games, in 10 seconds or less. So um, I don't understand why this game is being released on these super strong consoles. Um, obviously for PC, the you know the stronger your PC is, the better. Uh, but but anyone that's playing this game competitively is going to have an SSD that will match the PS5 or the Xbox or better. More than likely, is going to be better. So why are we having to wait for people to load in? Like and let's get a, this ball right. rolling. Here. But here's the thing: I think that's by design. Now that I think about it, I, I have yep. a big feeling they they even when they talked about this game coming out. Their whole focus was just to be a, a fun experience, but also a competitive one. And they had those things where they had like the different tournaments, like the promo videos of different like pro players from Call of Duty playing the game. And I, to me, this seems intentional. All of the different UI elements that they've chosen, the loading screens, that you could tell somebody that was in charge of that was looking at this as like, okay, I can imagine this being like in a stadium somewhere and there's commentators talking about pre-match and all this shit. But if you're just playing for fun or anybody that's not, you know, a, a pro at the game, it's a waste of your time. <laughs> yeah. So Ubisoft, please clean up your menus. And also, uh, when we load back out of a game, don't make me sit for 10 minutes in your end of match thing and then lock me out of editing my loadouts because you have to have a thing come up, coming up across my entire screen saying creating, creating match. match. <laughs> we, don't, we know. We're in the queue. We're aware. We chose to be there. You don't got to tell us. Mm -hmm. So clean it up. And um, um, a link to that would be, uh, why are we getting disqueued from matchmaking um, automatically in rank no, but not casual? Uh, the, I mean, I understand that the party's disbanding in rank mode because, okay, okay, yeah, you, you played this. We have SBMM in the rank mode, Well, obviously. they said that there was actually a bug. Apparently, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to keep your okay, party, right. uh, your lobby after every game. Who knows? Well, so, so for the casual mode, yes, you are supposed to be keeping in your lobby. That's a main selling point. But for ranked, um, I'm pretty sure they're not going to do that because the whole point of ranked is for there to be actual MMR, actual um, SBMM, not to the thing that Call of Duty does. That's a whole other conversation that we'll go through at some point, I'm sure. But the, the natural SBMM that is supposed to be in competitive mode, um, don't there, there's no reason to remove us from the queue where we have to manually begin searching again just keep that search going like we understand you're going to find another squad to put us against once we've gotten that you know rank up or rank down from the previous match whether we win or lose there's no reason to like remove us from the queue i it understand might be like, landing, a, like a debrief it's... type situation maybe they want it to be so it doesn't automatically put you back in if you've already been stressed out in a, in a rank match and you're sweating your life out um, but you've actually brought up a good point too about the lobbies. Right now, when I play the game, if I was a solo player and I didn't have like you to play with, I would feel I think very alone. Not a lot of people talk in the matches, mm -hmm. and overall, the entire experience, while it is fun, feels a bit sterile to me. They need to implement some more community-based uh, systems, I think, inside the game itself. Perhaps mm -hmm. like we talked about prior, like a clan system or maybe like a clan war thing, where you can have like a clan, recruit people, have like leaderboards. Oh yeah. Maybe earn like some skins related to your clan and have like a, a clan emblem designer or like a way to, to earn them. Uh, something to kind of build communities in the actual game and not just rely on external platforms to do that. Um, I mean, it just feels like right now, if, if you're playing by yourself, it just kind of feels like a bot lobby. It feels like playing against NPCs, nobody's really, you know, communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, I, also now, think... I can definitely attest to that um, if yeah. I could really quick because um, I, I kind of felt the same way. I was fine playing on my own um, before I started playing with you a lot more like we did um, within the past week. Um, but now knowing how much you and I can communicate um, and how much more I want that, like I, I'm not scared to go in on my own. But like you said, it, it's just like boring. It's like I know I'm not going to have that same experience. Uh, yeah, um, exactly. Being able and... to share those moments. So um, obviously, you know, if your best friends aren't on, you know, you 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 do want to be able to go ahead into the match and like you know 
talk the smack with people, whether it's your teammates and calling them trash or you make friends and then you want to stay with them. So you go ahead and on ahead. I think the answer to that, um, which would have to be moderated a little bit because it, it could um, cause issues with matchmaking. But if you um, just like several other games have it where you can select, hey, I have a mic. I want to play with other people that only have mics. And that needs to be dependent on if you're in a PlayStation chat party or Xbox chat party or are you in the game chat? So it has to be based on that. Not just, oh, do I have a mic? But does the game detect that you are using the mic for the game? Um, so that way you can kind of merge with just those people who want to have that same experience as you. And then the people who don't care to talk with anyone, they do just want to go solo. They have that option to turn it on or off. I think too, there's a there's a big difference. And I think a lot of people fall into one of two camps. They're either meta players or fun players. I mm -hmm. think meta players tend to be more solo. They're more gold oriented, goal focused. They, ha they want to be the best. I think... You know, more fun players are usually more sociable. They want to build relationships with other players. They want to be a part of a community. They just want to have a good time when they're online. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that while the game needs to cater to both, they need to have two good avenues for both type of player. Um, that way that they can, you know, grow, be as broad as possible in their reach. Yeah, no, and, and and again, I think I think that microphone thing is is really what's going to kind of connect that, or or if, just like when you boot up like Netflix or something for the first time, it's like, hey, go ahead and select these, you know, at least three that you want. Like, just kind of do that. Ha have a preference list, and then since there's no SBMM in the game, um, outside of like ranked or whatever, it is like, okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and prioritize what you selected, and then we'll prioritize what we are going to do, like connection and whatnot. Um, I think connection obviously should still stay first no matter what, um, but it, it shouldn't be too hard. I think if they put in that option and people know about that option being available, then everyone is going to be using that. Oh, like, okay, yeah, let me go ahead and set up my preferences real quick so that I can find people that want to play at that. Because I don't think you and I are the only ones. I think that since um, PlayStation and Xbox have had their chat party, it doesn't come out. Yes, it's been great to kind of have that where I'm not getting disconnected from like our voice chat. Um, in the middle of, of transitioning from the game to the menu. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, since we're relying on these private chat parties, n everyone's doing that. So no one is bothering to try to communicate. Because if, if I suddenly make the decision, okay, I want to go ahead and talk with other people, unless someone else happens to be making that same decision, it's not going to work out. I'm still going to be I, just I there agree. by myself. I agree, 100%. I think they need to so. incentivize players to party up and, and use in-game chat. Uh, yeah. Whether it be text-based or vo voice-based, maybe you do a thing where you have a certain percent of like XP bonus for the whole uh, team, depending on how many players you have that are engaged in chat in the match. Uh, just something to kind of make it worth your while, make you feel like you need to be a bit more vocal or a bit more community focused. I think that that would be cool. I don't think that'll ever happen just because, no, you know, just wish then there. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But that is why we are on the wish list. So we'll go to the next topic if you want yeah i mean that's pretty much all i had as far as like my items can you think of anything else that you'd like to see in season one um i probably had a couple things but um not, nothing that i can really remember right now um i know that we are going to be getting that l115 sniper rifle that is my child that is my baby um i know you're working on putting up some uh shorts um from what i had uh on battlefield 4 so so you'll see that the um lvoa assault rifle i'm definitely excited for that um you can saw it off with the sawed off barrel, uh, double barrel. I don't barrel. know what that's all about. They they were like three yeah. new weapons, and one of them is the same thing, just shorter. It, I don't understand. Yeah, which which means it's going to have even worse range than what it does now. So. But hey, it reloads fast. So and also we've already established that the uh, you know hip firing is great in this game. So I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I I I hate trying to use the shotguns. It was you know I wanted to try to use it so I could like, so I could say that I did. Um, but I, slog, I, I don't dude. really care about shotguns bad. ever it was in, awful. Mu in multiplayer games. Yeah, it definitely was. It, it didn't um, feel rewarding at all. I mean, the reload speed on those things is just a detriment. I mean, too. it's awful. What do you think about yeah, but, the GSK faction, though? Because they have a shield. It looks like the ultimate this time around is their shield. And yep. based on the preview we got, you can actually use your pistol while having the shield deployed. So, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of weird. I mean, so they definitely went um, with that. That that's Blitz Shield um, from Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I don't know how well you know the characters, but I, I, I did get a lot of I've hours in that a, game. I played about maybe forty minutes of our, our success. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So so if you I, I do ever pull it up, that that's a character called Blitz, um, where he has a riot shield that has a flash function, is like a flashbang built onto it. Um, I think in Rainbow Six they 
as of right now, I think it has three flashes, maybe five usages. So we'll have to see how they balance that out. But obviously the characters did just there to have that faction in there. Uh, they also introduced Jaeger. Um, he has a lot of people kept, I don't know why they're making this mistake, but a lot of people um, kept saying that he has cameras. That's not a camera. Uh, that's an ADS system. Um, it stands for uh, active denial device or something like that. Um, or it's just a, yeah, well, I think uh, it's when you throw a grenade, system. it can bounce it away, right? Because they saw that. In yeah, well, yeah it's, yeah, it's like a trophy system. It's, it's just a trophy system from COD. Um, I, at least that that from what I saw, that's what it was. I saw a lot of people keep trying to say it was camera. I was like, I don't think that's a camera. It doesn't make sense that it would be a camera. No, this game, in this game is 16, too fast so. paced for us to have cameras. We don't we don't need a, yeah. It's not like Valorant where you've got like a slower paced game and you're trying to do a setup right. for a bomb site. Uh, we don't yeah. need that. We need active now, abilities, I, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how um well that that system is really gonna work because i mean I, I know a lot of people do throw grenades but i think the grenade splash damage is pretty low it's pretty easy to dodge a grenade um that's why when i have gotten killed by i'm like damn that's a good throw well yeah um, but also i would argue that i feel as if the mines are the only play i mean realistically the mine is so good you can even do it yeah where you can pre prep it and be midway through your deployment and then jump and look up and you can kind of launch it pretty far. I mean, I don't do anything. Yeah, it definitely has some planning to throw it out for sure. Um, I think it's at the end of the day, it's still like a coward's item to use, but that doesn't it, mean it's it not gets fun. results. It's fun, dude. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> Absolutely. So. All right. Well, I think that's about all we have today. So thank you, for Kanabi, for joining me. We're going to have a lot more content yeah, coming you. up on season one. Uh, stick around. Some other episodes of Off Meta coming up and some just fun gameplay. So remember, do not forget to have fun, everybody, in pursuit of the meta, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. I say the future is ours! If you...